welcome everybody. My name is John Leland. I, I still am a little bit in awe of all this technology. With me today, uh, at, in the collaboration and the Combreeders work is Rachel Keen. Rachel, good morning, good afternoon. You're back on the East Coast. Uh, the, you have like two feet of snow outside? Yes, we definitely do. We are snowed in since yesterday. <laughs> Great. Well, anyway, I appreciate everybody being here. And uh, this is going to be a little bit rapid fire. I, I really work not to be the fire hose that's too much water and too much information. So, uh, but I am, my intention is to cover six apps that uh, we use every day at ComBridges and that I, that, you know, it's one of the things that I spend a lot of time doing in my job is researching apps and experimenting with apps and finding the best ways to take advantage of this communication revolution that um, we're all swimming in from Facebook's data violation to, you know, uh, grassroots uh, user generated content and social video and so forth. So I'm, I'm going to, I hope to cover the six apps, not comprehensively, but really from a, a kind of executive, uh, executive summary point of view uh, of what I think are the key advantages and why we've made those decisions. And then I really want your questions and we can have a dialogue and kind of zoom in more to, uh, you know, the things that you care most about, because it's all about interact interactivity and I want to know what you like. Uh, so I have created a, a little presentation. So I will use that to guide us and then I'll be jumping back and forth uh, between that presentation and some real live screen demos. I'm going to be living out on the on the you know skinny branches in terms of doing live demos, which you know is always a bit tricky. Uh, I can't help but but give you a little bit of background. So uh, I'm going to do that real quickly. Uh, you know, in terms of my background, most of you know that I've been doing creative services in one form or another for 33 years. Uh, founded the Leland Company in New York in 1985, uh, and then it became Com Bridges when I moved back to California in 1990. Uh, I really believe in digital marketing as a way to communicate authentic value. You, the, even though we are kind of talking about tips and tricks with apps today, uh, it's going to be really a lot more of that. And as I think a lot of you know, I'm also a speaker and webinar leader, obviously and uh, author of the book, Eight Key Concepts, Internet Marketing, Eight Key Concepts, Every Business Must Know, which I'm really proud of the fact that it's held up so well, even though I wrote it five, six years ago. So three really quick points, because even though I'm talking about technology today and I'm talking about apps and I'm talking about the things we have fun with and what we use to communicate authentically and to support our clients to communicate authentically. Um, you know, I need to give the context that I'm going to do this in very rapid fire fashion. So marketing uh, business is about relationships, right? It's not about marketing and getting the benefits out there. It really, this, I learned this years and years ago in New York, it was kind of drilled into the cells of my body that, you know, business is about relationships. So it's not about formulas. It's not about get rich quick tricks. And here's if you follow one, two, three, this is going to get you, you know, six figures in three months. It's like, I just think that occasionally that stuff can work. But um, at the end of the day, you're not making the world a better place and you're not really delivering the kind of value that happens when you build relationships. So how do you build relationships? Relationships happen through communication. So marketing is about connection, not about, not about technology. And, that, and that's the, the third piece is the communication and marketing is not about technology, it's about communication. So that's what all of this is designed to do. I think that was like two minutes or less, but those are really, really, really important ideas to me because without that authentic connection without real communication, without real relationship building. This is all a bunch of boxes and wires and stuff. And, and, and at the end of the day, it doesn't really create the kind of value, uh, valuable connection that um, authentic marketing is built on. 
So we, we, I could do an hour, I could do a whole day workshop on that, but I just wanted to put that context out there before we dive in. So let's dive in. So this is the infographic. I'm going to show you how to download it. I'm actually going to show you how to create a download link inside Squarespace in just a moment. But so the first of the six apps, and this is the infographic, obviously, is, is Squarespace for website design. And even though my own website, full disclosure, my own website is still in WordPress because I haven't been able to move it. And I, and I still do um, WordPress websites for more complicated and sophisticated companies and applications. Um, so I'm not saying that Squarespace replaces WordPress, but if you're looking for a fast track, if you're looking for affordability, if you're looking for ease of maintenance, I mean, just this morning, a friend of mine contacted me about a WordPress form that wasn't working. And, and the part of the reason that I recommend Squarespace is this um, ease of use and the fact that it's what we call in tech circles uh, a closed garden, a walled, gar a walled garden. They host it, they maintain the application, they do the backups, you're not dealing with what plugin should I use for that, the features are all there. So um, I'm going to give you, I'm going to, I'm going to do this kind of demo. Rachel is going to put in a couple of uh, links because one, I've already done a 15 minute webinar that, that she's going to give you the recording of. Um, and there are a bunch of blog posts on my site. Uh, that you can use to get further background about Squarespace. So rather than talk about it, I'm going to just kind of show you real quick. So let me switch over to my browser. This is a um, social media for social action site that's easier for me to that's easy for me to demo with. Um, so social media for social and I'm just using my resources page here. Forgive me if you're uh, on the Trump side of politics. This is on the other side, which is where I live. Just telling you the truth. So this is what it looks like on the web. This is what it looks like inside uh, Squarespace. And you can actually see I'm in settings here. I was just checking my domains. I've got a bunch of domains. I've got four domains pointing to the same site. You could go to sm4sa.com and I'll go to pages, which is where you edit. And I'm going to go to the resources page and I'm going to go into edit. So this is, how, this is how easy it is to edit in Squarespace. So what I wanted to do was to show you how easy it is. So this is a text block. As soon as I click in the text block, we get your basic memo, uh, sorry, your basic menu. And um, I'm, this is where you can go to off to download this PDF. I'll email you a link to the PDF also. Uh, with a follow-up email, but if you want to get that infographic for yourself, as soon as I finish here, you'll be able to go here and download it. So what, they, what they've done inside Squarespace is uh, to offer you the ability to create a link, right? So I, I did, li like you would in any other application, you highlight the text and then you go to the link icon, right? So I'm creating a link, but what they do, not only to go to an external link, or to create the internal links are called contacts. So I could create a link to one of the other pages on the site. They have a files tab. I mean, how easy is that? If you want to do the same thing I'm doing here in WordPress, I, I mean, I have one site that we did that had a huge um, library of PDFs and we literally had to install a plugin in order to make that easy. Infographic, what's the best marketing app for that? That would be the one. So I upload this within here to, to um, Squarespace. I say, that, yes, that's the one that I want to link to. And boom, that's my, uh, so we got that. See how easy it is? That's great, that is super easy. <laughs> Thanks, although I'm not, I'm not uh, seeing the save. I, I think I did save it, yeah, because I see it. So there's the page. One of the other things really easy to, to look at, and um, I, I do this thing with my mouse. Somebody's going to have to teach me how to do that properly because I keep making my browser um, do different things. So it has this little toggle here, very easy to preview, full desktop, mobile, and so forth. But anyway, so that's here in mobile. Click download. And there, 
there's the there's the infographic. So we did it at that at that URL that we were talking about um, for uh, social media for social action dot org slash resources. You can check it out for yourself and download that PDF right now. I'll post that one again. It was the first link I posted. It's also going to be this link yeah. coming okay, at cool. you right now. So Squarespace has changed how I work. These are some packages. If you go to combridges.com uh, website development, you can see all those options. This is actually an old website uh, for an insurance friend of mine. This is the new version done in Squarespace. Uh, modern, There another huge thing about Squarespace is is their templates are really beautiful. And uh, I'm gonna keep moving. So number two, I, I still use MailChimp with some clients, um, but I've become a believer in ConvertKit. And, and the reason that I'm a believer, and, and Rachel is gonna put up some links to a blog post uh, about email marketing that's well targeted. So part of this context of doing email marketing that's about real communication, that's about building real connections, is segmenting your list. And one of the issues that I have, MailChimp is definitely my number two app uh, and an easier entry, play, entry path for a lot of people. But ConvertKit, one of the slogans that somebody, it actually came from a testimonial, uh, the customer said, um, it's got the power of Infusionsoft and the ease of use of MailChimp. And I think that that's true because the issue with MailChimp is that everything is divided into lists. There's a lot more flexibility in ConvertKit to go straight to um, tags so that, for example, you can, you can do an email to different tags um, that are within your list, not an email to this list, an email to that list. So I hope that makes sense. It's an architectural distinction, but it gives you enormous power. Um, Rachel, put up the, the, li the list there. This is the only application I'm talking about today that we're going to give you an affiliate link. If you want to sign up for ConvertKit, I'd appreciate you using that link. Um, but let me show you just a, a taste of how this works. Part, part of what happens with tagging and with segmenting is you have the opportunity to build follow-up sequences. So this is actually a look behind the scenes of my client, CandidaSupport.org, where we, we've offered a really substantial PDF download. And then once people download the PDF, then they're getting this sequence. And there are automations in, in other applications. This is not the only application that does it. Everybody's getting into it now because it's a, a function of funnel design. And we can talk more about that if you want. But, you know, this is a powerful kind of engagement. And the important thing here is that um, Candida Support has a huge volume of information. And part of their relationship building is really educating their customers about how their products get used, what the detox process when you're addressing Candida is like, and they don't pussyfoot around about it. They tell the truth about it. And that I've helped them do that and build this sequence that really does create better engagement. So is that making sense? I want to take a breath for and a sip of water. But, uh, are people, are people getting value? Is this making sense? Are you tracking with me? <laughs> keep going, Randy, Randy says. Randy thank says, you. Okay, keep good. Going. Yep. Great. <laughs> Makes sense to me. I think the tags seem extremely useful. Um, I've used tags in other things, but to use them instead of uh, full lists, that seems uh, very convenient. Yeah. And again, the blog post that Rachel put in there about email marketing conversations and conversions is, I discussed it in detail. So. We, we can flesh that out and, and kind of give more explanations as we go. Uh, so I think we're going to dive into Canva next. Let me go back to the presentation. I was in the presentation. I didn't need to turn that off. Sorry. Um, but, you know, Rachel and I have become a, a great team uh, partly around this process of this application called Canva. I'm going to give a, um, you know, a, a honorable mention here which is that there's another similar application from Adobe called Adobe Spark, which I've used one for animations, particularly within Instagram, for example. Um, and they also have a, a, a low end video tool, which I think is interesting. But Canva has really become our tool of choice. And 
Rachel and I collaborate in it every day uh, because we're creating social graphics and getting them out for our clients. So why are we in Canva, Rachel? Canva is great because it's so simple and so easy to use. Um, they actually provide uh, pre-sized templates for social media graphics and tons of other things you could use for your business like presentations, documents, um, infographic templates, which is where we uh, used this infographic that we're using today. Um, they also have marketing materials, business cards, social media headers. So all that stuff comes pre-sized. And then as you can see from the graphics here, um, they have preformed text and fonts that go together. They have icons you can use. Everything's drag and drop. There's no confusing icons like in Photoshop. Um, it's all very straightforward. Um, under the background tab, that's where you change your background color. It's all extremely straightforward. Um, you can edit photos in there. Um, basically, they use, it's a design tool that anybody can use. Uh, you just come in and you start playing around and you can design anything. Yeah, and here, here's an example of some of the templates and um... Yeah, it, it, one of the other things that I like is there's a photo library in there. Some, a lot of the images and graphics that they offer are free, um, and the ones that aren't are clearly labeled, and they cost $1, $1. Uh, for the ones that we license out of there. Um, yeah, and I like, this, I like this too because you can use um, the graphics for social media, but you can also, as you can see, some are for print design. You can print out posters and business cards, and you can order them right uh -oh, there on Canva. Oh, sorry. Some of them are for print design, yeah. too. Yeah, I mean, and, and in fact, we did this uh, infographic using a template for infographics that are in, uh, in Canva. So thanks, Rachel. That was great. You're very clear. And um, we, we're, we can do a demo of that if people want it. One dollar. That's insane. And Christy, I see your question about the email program. Let me do that at the end so that I can keep my word, hopefully, and get through this in about 30 minutes. Yeah. So number four, we're tracking along here, is, um, is Soapbox, which is truly an amazing application. If you don't know already, video has become like this huge thing on the web. And you know, right here, right now, being able to talk to you by video and create a connection like this is revolutionary. Um, and then, but people have to go through a lot. And uh, I think it's, you know, that, that's like another full day workshop about helping people address their fears and address the technological challenges of doing video. But what I, what I want to show you, here's Soapbox. So there I am, look, I'm on video. Um, so this is the Soapbox tool. Um, I don't know, tell me if you can see this. So it's, a, it's actually a Chrome plugin. So where I'm pointing my mouse up here in the upper right hand corner is, is the Soapbox tool. And if I click that, we get a recording. Can you see that pop up? Yep. Okay, good. So, so this is the recording tool. I'm not gonna record right now, um, but they even give you some nice little coaching things. And the, the reason that they're putting my video within one third is that what happens in this when you record it is that your video ends up going side by side with the screen sharing. So I did trim off the beginning of the video already, but this is what I think is a friggin' amazing editing tool. And as most of you know, I've not only been a video professional for decades, but I used to write for Videography Magazine and review video editing tools tools. I work in Final Cut Pro myself and uh, I've worked anyway, I've worked in all the major video editing tools. And this thing is so simple that uh, I think almost anybody can use it. Basically, what they give you is it's limited, right? Um, they give you three different views. So this is the basic view of what you're seeing here, me on one third, whatever you want to share screen sharing on the other. And then you can switch between full screen sharing or full frame video. So I, I'm gonna play the video so that you can get a feel for that. This is just a few seconds. Hi, so I'm doing just a very quick little video here using Whiskey Soapbox. And I'm also showing you my screen, just the opening 
Oh, I'm sorry, I shouldn't. You can see, by the way, as I'm playing, there's a light blue color that shows you where you are down here. Today's webinar. So, oh, but I got to keep showing my showing you my screen, just the opening title screen from today's webinar. So, because this is a demo, I can show you the screen. I can also then edit to me full screen. I can change, I have to look over here, change to the second slide to show you that the screen sharing is working. Uh, and so, that's the kind of way that it works going back and forth here. I am again, full face, perhaps, if we get that far in the editing. So, so that's what, what I think is really amazing about this is that um, that's simple, but that helps you move beyond doing just simply a talking head. You know, what's happening with most people's video these days is that they're only being a talking head, right? If I go stop screen sharing, now I'm just a talking head. Um, and when you can illustrate, and if you're doing a software demo of any kind, you can actually show your software. To do that with regular video, you would use Camtasia or another screen recording tool. You would edit together with a live video, and immediately we're at another level of sophistication in terms of production. So this is quick, fast, easy, and enables you to communicate in a visual way that's beyond just a talking head. So Soapbox and, you know, Wistia, many people are not familiar with the fact that, uh, you know, video hosting services are valuable. Um, I'm a huge fan of YouTube, and I think every video that you want to get out to the public, you should put on YouTube and optimize for YouTube. But in a lot of cases, when you're creating a video for your website, you don't want to use YouTube because they're going to push not only advertising in front of it, but they're also going to push uh, other videos that they think you want to watch because their job is to keep you on YouTube. So when you go with a video hosting service, your video is actually more optimized and you're within your web domain, within your website, and you have more control. And they have other things like, um, if I jump back into the screen sharing uh, to show you really quickly, I'm going to make a quick screen sharing maneuver. Um, you know, this kind of call to action. And you can play with this for free, by the way. Um, it does, of course, link in to a, um, uh, uh, a Wistia account if you want to host the video. But uh, they can, you can export it uh, to other things, but you can't download it without going to Pro, which I think is uh, 13, 12 something a month. But you know, if I wanted to just share this link right now, I can copy this URL and put that on social media. Um, there are also, my chat is overlapping here. So, so there are those kind of options. Let me go back. So the export, the export goes to your Wistia account, not to download. So if I wanted to use this in a production environment, um, I need to pay for the pro account and then I could download it, bringing it in, bring it into um, Final Cut or whatever video editing tool I'm using and then add an open, put lower third titles. But that call to action power is one of the things that originally attracted me to Wistia because you can literally put an email subscribe button, for example, where pe people put their email address right on the video. Um, or you can even gateway a video and not so much in Soapbox, but in their regular platform where you do five minute intro content. And then if people want to watch the rest of it, they put in their, their email to get access. All of those kinds of flexibilities. Customize the player, blah, blah. I like Wistia also. Wistia is also one final little thing is really good content marketing company. They walk their talk uh, and produce fun, lively, useful videos. So anyway, I like Wistia.com and they've created this soapbox tool that is our uh, fifth application. Video webinars, you know, this, this is my tool. Here's your demo. Here we are. <laughs> going, going back and forth with the screen sharing. Um, you know, Zoom, I've played with a lot of different uh, video tools. And for this kind of live video, I think Zoom is the bomb. I mean, it really is just the web webinar application uh, you know, which I license obviously gives me the ability to create these kind of landing pages. I get a full email of, you know, broken out already. Yeah, I think it is better than go to meeting. Absolutely. Um, I think the video quality is better and the video interface is way better than go to meeting. Um, 
and you know this webinar tool gives me not only the email addresses but breaks out who registered but didn't show up which always is a big differentiator and it's nice in the spirit of well-targeted email to respond differently to the people who were there than the people that weren't there um, and talk to them like you know who they are and what they're doing and you're paying attention. Uh, it also is doing, I mean, as I pointed out, if you were with us at the very beginning, not only recording this, and they offer both cloud-based recording and uh, my local hard drive recording, uh, they break out the audio separately. So if you wanted to use it for pod podcast recording, you can do that. Um, and the other thing that they're doing that I really like in the webinar product is the ability to integrate Facebook Live. So we are now talking Facebook Live. I shared it to my Combridge's Facebook page and went in there right before we started and shared that to my personal profile. So this live webinar that's being hosted on Zoom uh, is also on Facebook Live. They do also offer the ability to try to, lock, to stream live on YouTube, not both at the same time though. So if you wanna go live on YouTube, if your YouTube channel is more important to you than your Facebook presence, which is true for a lot of people, you could be live streaming on YouTube at the same time. So I, this has become where I live. I actually use Zoom every day uh, for meetings. Rachel and I meet on Zoom. I meet with clients on Zoom. I have weekly clients in Michigan and other places. Uh, and we're, I'm just using it all the time. It's superior to Skype also for these kind of meetings. I even learned about a new feature today because I was on a Zoom session um, with my Patreon tribe. I've, I have a kind of very low profile Patreon channel, but if anybody is looking for uh, marketing support, I have an accountability group that just two other people right now. It's $11 a month. Every Thursday morning at 8 a.m. Pacific, we get together and do marketing for about 45 minutes. We go from 8 to 8.45. We check in at the end and the beginning with what we're up to. But it gives a structure for getting things done. So, um, I don't know, Rachel, could you find my Patreon channel link and throw it in your <laughs> Sure. <laughs> go to Patreon and search John Leland, you'll find it. But anyway, um, we were on one of those calls this morning, and uh, I was trying to help one of the people with a WordPress issue that I mentioned earlier, and uh, found out not only does it do screen sharing, but you can give remote control via their screen sharing. I had not done that before. That's the regular Zoom product, actually, not, the, not just the webinar. But it has all those kind of capabilities. And the other thing I would say superior to go to meeting is the multi-channel video. I was on a, a video event, he called it a master class, with this really quite brilliant video producer named Nick Askew. And it was all video interaction. Um, you know, you can, I've been on Zoom calls with like 10, 12, I think you can, they say up to 100, I don't know, that's an interesting challenge, but they, it's, the interface is really well designed and it works. So that's Zoom. And then the last one, we're right at 1030, so it's kind of cool, um, is Thinkific. The big issue here is, uh, not an issue, let me say it differently. The big thing about online courses is that it is a really, really powerful way to create engagement. Um, you know, the ability to teach and to share information has, I've, I've been wanting to do courses for a long time. I've not been successful at finding time to work on it, but I will do a real quick um, demo of, I don't know if I'm even gonna call it a demo, but let me go back to the, um, Screen sharing. One of the things I was going to say about online course platforms is you can also use it to sell digital products. Um, it also is a really powerful way to draw people in. Like I was talking about, you could do a five minute video and then gate uh, the rest of the content. Because courses are organized by chapters, it's also really easy to do a, a quick, easy course that then has an upsell at the end of it. And that kind of configuration but that builds engagement because you're offering the free course and valuable content within that introduction. Oh, one other thing I'm gonna say about Thinkific because I don't wanna forget is their pricing model. But they, they have this really interesting price model that starts at free. And um, you know, a lot of the other, in fact, part of the reason that I switched off of the one that I was using is because I was eating a monthly, spending a monthly fee without having my courses out there making money. 
Um, so they have a free starter package, which um, does take a higher percentage as a 10% transaction fee. But if you're not, if you're really selling a low number of courses, that's less expensive than $49 a month, which is their next level. Then their transaction fee moves to 5%. Um, or if you spend $99 a month and are really selling courses, there are zero transaction fees. That makes sense to me. That really helps uh, start people that are just starting with courses um, do it. Okay, so this is Thinkific's pricing plan that I was talking about. Starter, 10% transaction fee, but zero per month. $49 a month, 5% transaction fee, 99 And they, they're quite sophisticated. They're, one of the other things that I've been impressed that they've done recently is a groups feature, which enables you to license your training to corporations, for example, which can be a hugely profitable thing. So if you've got valuable content and you want to license it to groups of people, for example, to a corporation, this platform has those tools. I also did a proposal for a big corporation that wanted an integrated sign-in. And at this higher level, um, they also had a, the technology for doing an integrated sign-in. So that's the kind of stuff that I think Thinkific is out ahead of the curve. And I and their interface easy to use, the ability to incorporate lots of different kinds of content. The support has been excellent. So anyway, that's my, my sixth app. So let's do questions. So back a minute ago, or sorry, when I was talking about email, Christy asked how much is the email program and how much do I charge to implement it? So here's ConvertKit, zero, zero to 1,000 subscribers, 29 a month, one to three, 49, et cetera. Uh, it's quite powerful and, you know, so it's not the cheapest thing on the block. If it's all about money, MailChimp has a really, really generous entry level um, offer to, and they stay free. This $29 a month would be free, but you're not going to be able to do the powerful targeting that, that you can do. So that uh, hopefully that answers that one. Um, John's Patreon page, there it is. Um, so, and then how much do I charge to implement it is a tricky question because I don't just do email marketing. I really am working uh, largely with um, retainers these days um, that are based on helping with the strategy, helping build the funnel, helping build the landing pages. And then that includes um, the backend support uh, for ConvertKit. So those are start the the retainers. In, I tried to do them at five hundred dollars a month, and it really didn't work out. I have not actually, I think, had a five hundred dollar a month retainer client, but I'm doing a thousand and two thousand per month, where I'm your partner and we're both helping you do stuff. I'm providing the strategy and the mentoring, and also the uh, uh, implementation support. And that's one of the ways that Rachel has really made a big difference because we're doing social posts. And we're working back end, this is more of an agency app with an app called CoSchedule and doing, you know, Twitter, LinkedIn, Instagram, Facebook, et cetera, um, for our clients, including producing the Canva graphics and resizing them and all that kind of stuff. So hopefully that, that answers that question. Um, the second email question uh, from Steven is, can you put graphics in a ConvertKit without it being an attachment? Yes. Um, in, in fact, one of the things that I will give you a, a little, almost like a disclaimer on ConvertKit, and I guess I can get out of here, is that it's, it's, the templates are not as drag and drop as they are in MailChimp. Um, they work with CSS templates. <clears throat> and so part of getting set up is to have us design or create your own CSS template and then Within that, I mean, it, it, with adding graphics once you have the template done actually is quite intuitive. I could show you. I mean, it's it's just as easy as it is on Mailchimp. You click add graphic, put the graphic in. Um, you know, you want to optimize for 600 pixels uh, in terms of width, but the answer is yes, absolutely. You can put graphics into ConvertKit and putting the graphics into your template once you've got the template. And you know, what most people do is they, you know, duplicate campaigns and. Anyway, yeah, and I think we've made um, absolutely yes. What's we've that? made we've made some email headers for ConvertKit too, so you can really make the header look really nice as you open it. Yeah, you, you have you have 
have even more flexibility than you do in MailChimp. It just it, depending on how uh, adept you are at. Anyway, the, the, I could show you the drag and drop. If people want me to do that, let me know, uh, and I could. I can show you a convert kit email and how easy it is to edit. But ed the actual editing of the email is quite easy. The development of the template is a little more complicated. Um, Christy's next question is, if you want to do a lot of video from your home office, is it worth getting a faster internet connection than cable? Well, <laughs> it really depends on your local cable system and the speed that they're providing. I'm using local cable. Um, I do pay for the upgraded speed from my cable system, um, which happens to be Comcast. So it, it's all about the speed. So you can go very easily to test the speed, but um, I'm doing often up, you know, the, the download at close to 100 megabits a second, which is lightning fast. So um, the, one of the other things that I didn't get to do today is... Um, restart the computer. When you're doing an event like this, the right thing to do is to restart the computer. Um, but anyway, the, I think that you can get a plenty fast connection from your local cable system, depending on who they are and how they work. So another question, uh, what do you think of podcasting for future webinars? That, it's a great question. Um, you know, one of the things that I've been involved in some dialogues online about is podcasters putting their podcast on YouTube, which is a little different from your question, but that that's, I definitely think about that kind of stuff. As I mentioned, you know, like Rachel and I have an idea to be, you know, kind of like the old guy and the younger woman, <laughs> you know, like there's a nice dynamic with you. You said it better than me, Rachel, if you want to chime in, but you know, th that she and I could collaborate and do, we could do a podcast webinar series and, and, you know, produce them like this, and then take that audio recording and go to a podcast syndicator like Libsyn or there's some other ones, and you know, you know make, make it a podcast. The big thing for me and the challenge that I see over and over again with audiences is the time commitment. It's all a big time commitment. And um, right now, I'm happily busy and have really good retainer clients and we're jamming. But um, I, you know, in the future, I like the idea of doing that, um, but it's just like the resources both to produce and to market are very real. So um, the, I think that answers your question, Stephen. Let me know if not, but the answer is I love the idea. As far as I'm concerned, if you're going to produce it, why not distribute it? And, and, and I will take the video recording of this, put it on YouTube. Um, and, you know, it's already on Facebook, so it's got those other kinds of um, visibility. But anyway, that, that's the answer is, I think it's, it's, uh, it's a very good idea and very possible. It's just a matter of time and resources. One more, one more from Christy. Thank you for all these great questions. This is wonderful. The next webinar could be an overview of how to start marketing. How would you build marketing from the ground up? I, I'll tell you the reality, and I'm just being transparent here is that um, I really like the kind of stuff that I'm doing now in these retainers for slightly bigger companies who have a budget, who uh, ideally, an ideal client for me is somebody who has some good information resources. Like Candida support the PDF ebook that we did that's the, um, you know, the start of that sequence, which has really become an effective engagement and sales tool they had that content buried on their website. And one of the things that I do is when I work with people is look at the website and look at the assets and look at how to optimize the assets. So I, you know, I have a client right now that has a good video, but the video is like buried on their website. It's not visible on the homepage, obvious example, but you know, in Candida support, they had a book basically that was inside the website that unless you dug all over the website you would never have found. Now it's like the lead free information offer that we're doing Facebook advertising and bringing, and, and Google AdWords too, and bringing people in uh, to get that information and begin to create a relationship and show them the expertise. So all that's to say with, with regard to your idea, Christy, um, it, you know, it's, it, I'm not sure that's the right audience for me. 
although I love helping small businesses like that. And, and once I get more content, like if I, you know, one of the courses that I've already outlined but not produced is how to do a, a website in Squarespace. And I think that that's a great product. Um, I just haven't got the time and resources to produce it so far, something that I need to get to. Um, so Christie's follow-up comment is maybe it's so hard for smaller businesses to keep up with this. Maybe the answer is not to work with them. Small businesses only have time to do maybe one thing, email or video or, yeah, I mean, every business, I even, I mean, it's especially true, you're right, for solopreneurs. Small business is a, is a vague term because, you know, in the official economic kind of, if you read the newspaper, small businesses can be $10 million a year. Uh, that's relatively small business. So it depends on what kind of small business. But, but yeah, the solopreneurs um, are challenged. I mean, I'm not much bigger than a solopreneur. And as I've said, I have more ideas than I have the time and resources to implement. So I really do need to make choices. This kind of thing for me is fun. And I do love sharing the information, authentically I do. And I, I think it's clear I have a lot to say and a lot of information. I've been following media and, and you know, developing my expertise with these different apps over years. So um, it, it doesn't have to be hard if you go with the flow of where your authentic passion is uh, and then do enough that's appropriate to your bandwidth and don't overwhelm yourself. You know, life can be overwhelming by itself, right? And we all hopefully have enough mental health or whatever it would be to be able to, um, you know, sort things out for ourselves in life and have a balanced life and do things that are fun and self-care in addition to working. And it's not that different to make decisions around your business and how you want to be visible. Um, you know, I'm doing a, totally off the subject, but, you know, I'm, I'm participating in a business networking international BNI chapter locally. And I really like getting out and being with people. I do like a 45 second infomercial every week. And so I speak about my business and we talk about who are our ideal clients and it's really useful. And so what finding the right balance for you and your business, whether you're a solopreneur or a $10 million company, or end up is always a question of resources, talent, you know, what can you bring to the party? I have a proposal out to a company in the city that has been leading workshops on a particular kind of software, but their, their website is not well organized, their assets are not well optimized, and hopefully that, that will become a good client, They're not, not so far a client, but hopefully soon. Um, anybody need any links that they didn't get? Uh, otherwise, we'll see you at combridges.com. I have, I guess I did do a, a thank you closing slide that we could put up there. Why not? Why not? Thanks why not finish with a <laughs> finish with a flurry, right? Thank you. And thank that, you. that there's my personal information. If you hung in here for an hour, you're entitled to my direct personal email and my cell phone number. So how about that? <laughs> so I really, really appreciate your attention. Whether you're watching on Facebook Live, whether you're watching on Zoom. Uh, you know, this is fun to do, but without you, it ain't nothing. So um, you're my people. You're the ones that showed up, and I'm really grateful for that. And thank you again, Rachel, for all your support. It's wonderful to have our collaboration and teamwork happening the way it is. Definitely. Can't wait to so do anything more. Anything you want to say in closing? What's that? Can't wait to do more. Good. Yay. See? Enthusiasm. We love that. That's right. All right. Thanks, everybody. Have a wonderful day. Have a wonderful week. And uh, you've got the contact information. I think you can follow up with me, social media, web, all that stuff. So thanks again. Keep on doing it. Do it with authenticity and uh, build those relationships. So thanks again for coming. Thanks again for watching.